This is for Sim. And to cut it really, really short, what this does, and that's not quite precise, but what it mainly does, is to control your immobilizer. As of now, there are only two options if this thing goes bad. Number one, buy a new one. Number two, find a used one with a pair of keys. Regardless of these two options, you will still need a tech 2. Today I'm going to show you a way how you can copy the data of the old sim and clone it to your new one and therefore save the tech 2. Don't need to buy a used unit with keys, so it doesn't matter if you have them or not. And pretty much save yourself some time and some money. The first thing we need to do to achieve this is to basically scrap off the conformal coating of the EEPROM. The EEPROM is this chip right here, the black one. And what you want to do is to grab like a razor blade, a sharp knife, whatever, and just scrape the legs very thoroughly so that this conformal coating, which is like some spray on cover, comes off. It's like insulation so that we can make proper ground, or let's say proper contact with our test clip. Once you've done that, and I've done that already in my case, you can grab your test clip and put it on there. One thing to note about this before you put the actual test clip on is that the clip itself has a red wire. And you want to make sure that the red wire is in the top right corner. There's an indentation actually in the EEPROM to tell you how you need to put this thing on. So you want to make sure that it's put on in this orientation. So let's say this is the right corner or right top corner uh, when we look from this way. So this is exactly where we want the clip to come on. So I'm going to put this on like this. Of course, I will do it now when the camera is off because it's very hard to do it. So something like this. And that's a little like tip here. If you have issues and I have encountered that doing this like from over the top, just try to maybe angle a bit this thing. Hold on. I'll try with my own. So again, orientation, make sure to find the right one first. Okay. Then you can hold it actually in this degree, then you can look a bit from top, and then you have already got it on. It's very simple. Another thing to note, just for those of you who might plan to use this more often, or let's say who are not that like uh, good with putting stuff like this on, I wasn't good with that actually in the beginning, this clip will wear out. It will probably last for 50 or even 60 times you put this on, but after that, be prepared to maybe need to buy a new one was a super inexpensive you can find them pretty much everywhere i think on aliexpress just the clip alone goes for 90 cents so nothing expensive but but just something to keep in mind now once you've done that you can actually take your sim tool and in our case and this is the one we sell for 50 euros by the way i just want to mention it so 50 dollars i think quite a bit less but anyways so this is the thing we sell and it's basically based upon an Arduino. So here we have a knockoff Arduino. And then on top, this is like a project shield with a breadboard. And we just routed the wires in a specific manner, which you, but this you can you find in the documentation. So you can do this on your own and just put them together, put the header on, and then you can take your test clip. And this only goes on a single way here on this thing. Push it on just like that. And then you connect this tiny thing to your PC and you're good to go to use the software, which I will continue now on my PC. Before you can actually use the software for the first time, it might be necessary to install some drivers. I will link the drivers for our solution in the description down below, but you can also find them on our product page. So once you install those, you can open the SIM tool. And all you need to do now is to select the right COM port. In my case, it's the only device, so it's already selected. And what you can do now is to click on read. If everything has been connected properly, this window should open. There shouldn't be any warning messages or anything like that. And you can just save this to your desktop. In my case, I already did that once for testing. I will click on yes. And now I saved it. Now this gibberish here might not tell you much, but you can use the file you just read out to access our web tool. And here we can open it, upload it to the server, and then the information will be passed. And you will see we have information about our keys, the SYN codes to them, the PIN of the SYN, the VIN number, pretty much everything we could find of this thing. 
Another feature I want to show you is the ability to erase any data on this thing. Our theory is that eventually this will reset the sim to a factory new state. So far, nobody really knows. We had actually different solutions for this before, but we still have to take a look at a new one. We will do this, but for now, just keep that in mind. And here you see now that the data has been zeroed. Now let's say we just wanted to perform a simple cloning. We got a safe readout. Now we swap our sim units, click on write, select the one you know we read out before, and tell it that we want to overwrite it now. And if you want to be super sure, you can perform another read. And if it finishes without any complaints, you can be absolutely certain that everything is alright. However, if you get the complaints that the readout wasn't exactly correct or there's a mismatch with whatever like on our web tool, be warned. Sometimes it can happen that the readout you're gonna get actually is almost fine, but due to a failure in the EEPROM, certain areas might not. So what you can do in that case is to mail us the file. But what is important, you want your file to look something like this, you know, with these weird shaped letters. If it looks something like this and you still get errors, feel free to contact us. Another reason for the program to complain could of course be that the connection isn't properly, so you didn't scrap it good enough, the test clip isn't sitting right, and sometimes, and that's quite annoying still, it has to do with the EEPROM itself. If you have a factory new unit, it might read very fast and write also very fast, but sometimes you need to change the so-called delay. You can actually adjust this delay in the settings window. The lower you set the value, the faster the reading and the writing is going to be respectively. The higher you set it, the longer it's gonna take. But for that, you gain more stability. So basically, there are three factors you have to count in when performing this readout. Or let's say there are three failure points. Connection, so test clip conform with coding. The delays and potentially a bad EEPROM. So these are some things you need to keep in mind. And again, I want to show you how a good file looks like. If it looks something like this, you can be almost certain that something might not be right with your EEPROM. And sometimes, I haven't tested it myself, but sometimes it turned out that the EEPROM itself was completely trashed. So in those cases, let's say you get like half a good readout, which you are able to repair, you might want to try to change the EEPROM. It's relatively easy to do. It's very inexpensive, as I said. It's like 35 cents for, I think, a memory chip, so really not much. I'm also going to link the one in the description so you can find the right one in case it really happens to you. And just solder it back on. Doesn't really take much work, very easy to do. So, yeah. But of course, that might not always be the case. Regardless of that, this is how you can do it. And it doesn't really take much. Now we need to relevate some things. Some people ask me, can I reset my sim to like a factory new state? And as said, there is like a function built into this with a race, but it's still untested. So we will need to do some field testing. We also need to buy a new sim unit to just see how it looks like factory new. So there's that. On top of that, I also mentioned a one-click solution. And yes, we actually had a version which was able to pull this off with a single click. However, due to you know issues with the test clamp and everything, I decided against using it. Because you had like no real visual um, inspection of the file, so you couldn't tell does this work or not now, did I mess anything up? So I removed it for security reasons because I don't want anyone to damage you know their stuff with it. And what you also need to keep in mind, and this is something around this tool in general, it has been coded from a command line interface to a proper graphical user interface in three days. So this is an insane amount of work, but we tried to make this as usable as humanly possible. On top of that, by the way, this program also includes like a little help guide where you can see all the stuff I've mentioned earlier. 
and also gives you like some hints what you can do, what you can change. So you see, we really try to make this as beginner friendly as possible. Now something else so different. And this might be interesting for those of you who, as I said, do not want to buy it, who like to build stuff on their own, or who might don't want to pay for the shipping. I don't blame anyone for it. The best about all of this you have seen here today is that it's open source, which means you can go to our GitHub repository, link in the description down below, and you can find all the stuff I've shown you from the web page, which is this thing, by the way, all the way to the actual tool. It's all here. There are schematics, how you can wire this up, what you're going to need, stuff like that. Everything, you know, you can wish for. Feel free to play around with it. We have a license, so please take note of a license. It like tells you what you can do and what you can't. But it's pretty like liberal in my opinion. And pretty much, yeah, you're open to do whatever you want with this thing. Except for selling the design, of course, but still, still you, you, you know what I mean. If you want to support us, of course, we would be super thankful. It would be great when we could try to make even more crazy stuff. We're working on um, a key cloning tool, actually. So this might be really interesting. And if not, just as fine. Otherwise, we wouldn't release this so publicly. So, yeah, long story short, this was it. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this and especially I hope that this tool will bring some use to you. And if you have any questions, any problems, you know, with building something on your own, with the files you're going to read out, with I don't know, whatever, just let us know. With these words, goodbye and thank you.